Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 5 for April the 3rd, 2022. We begin a new unit today, uh, Unit 2, entitled Liberating Gospels. And our topic for today, taken from uh, our adult quarterly, is a leader with humility. Our devotional reading is taken from the Gospel according to John chapter 12, uh, verses 12 through 16. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel of Matthew uh, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And that is our print passage today uh, where we will be studying from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Our key verse reads, Say to daughter Zion, See your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. That's taken from Matthew chapter 21, uh, verse 5 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to study the immediate response of the crowds to Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. Secondly, to identify reasons why people today seek and follow new leadership. And then thirdly, to accept Jesus as a leader who offers hope for the world in every age. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson and discussion. Uh, the first outline is entitled, The Task. And then the second outline is entitled, The Testament. And the third outline is entitled, The Triumph. And again, we are thankful to God for yet another opportunity to be able to share our Sunday School lesson with you. We thank God for keeping us um, every day, watching over us and protecting us and watching over our family members, even in the midst of so much chaos all over the world. But we want you to get your Bible and follow along with us and uh, be prepared to take some notes. We want to be able to uh, leave you with an understanding or, uh, uh, as we affirm and we reaffirm this, this text uh, uh, as we seek uh, our Lord and Savior. Uh, certainly in this, this uh, Lenten season we want to be able to reflect uh, upon the activity of Christ and, and, and what was his mission uh, why was he coming into this world uh, and so we want to be able to lift that today uh, but our biblical context uh, from our lesson quarterly is as follows Jesus and his disciples were on the last leg of their pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover Jesus would celebrate the Passover with his disciples before facing his ultimate date uh, with divine destiny, his crucifixion at Calvary for the sins of the world. Uh, the journey to Jerusalem passed through Jericho. You can see that in Matthew chapter 20, verse 29, where Jesus touched two blind men and restored their sight. That's also in Matthew chapter 20, verses 30 through 34. But the uphill route required steady climbing across steep terrain for some 17 miles and at least 6 to 8 hours. But as Jesus approached the city, news of his arrival preceded him. He was the one who had healed the sick, raised the dead, and now uh, he was on his way to Jerusalem. Uh, we want to be able to appreciate Matthew's gospel uh, particularly his understanding of the Old Testament. Uh, but as we uh, open up the narrative of the New Testament, we have to remember that uh, when the New Testament story begins, that the Jews were uh, subjected to a foreign power. Uh, they were ruled and uh, by, an, um, by an able and despotic figure. But they were still waiting for a salvation yet unfulfilled. And Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, he understood uh, the Old Testament. He understood the, the Old Testament promises. 
Uh, and so what he essentially does, he uses the Old Testament as his New Testament theology. Uh, what I'm saying is he understood that there was a fulfillment that was to take place uh, at the arrival of uh, Jesus coming into the world and subsequently living uh, uh, and then dying for the sins of the world. And it's very important that we, as we think about this lesson uh, over and over again, as often as we come into this season and we reflect upon the life of Christ, sin is the backdrop of, of, of these gospel writers as they present Jesus uh, and his crucifixion. Um, uh, sin has always been the backdrop for Jesus coming into the world because that's the purpose, right? That was the purpose of him coming into the world to do away with sin. And when, when we talk about uh, sin, I don't want us to think about a, a specific act per se, but but I want us to think about the nature of sin. And if we go all the way back to Genesis 3, there was a nature issue involving sin uh, that had not been uh, uh, thoroughly removed, if you will. Uh, it had been addressed, but uh, uh, the, the problem, the issue of uh, removing it from the hearts of men, uh, uh, that work had to be accomplished by Christ himself. Uh, uh, he was the only one uh, in our biblical understanding that was able to come into this world and live in it and live apart from sin. He remained undefiled. Uh, he remained unmovable. Uh, he always did what the Father uh, required of him, even dying on the cross. So as we get into this lesson today, I want to read something to us from the book of Romans chapter 6 which I think pairs very well uh, with the purpose behind Jesus coming into the world but we'll lift that uh, as we go along but this first outline is entitled this the task this is taken from uh, Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 3 the Bible says as they approached Jerusalem um, they came and came to uh, Bethphage on the Mount of Olives Jesus sent two disciples saying to them go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there uh, with her coat by her untie them and bring them to me verse 3 if anyone says anything to you say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away so again, as we pick up this narrative, as, as we think about Jesus coming into Jerusalem, uh, as we read in our, uh, our context, uh, he is coming to the close, if you will, of, of, of his earthly life and ministry. He is coming to the close of the work uh, that he came to accomplish. Uh, uh, and so the stage is, is being set according to prophecy. Uh, that he would uh, come uh, into Jerusalem um, and this is the manner by which he would come and it's striking that we uh, talk about the way he came and this is what our lesson leads us to understand he came uh, with humility right he he led in a way that we could follow this pattern Jesus is not just uh, 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 presenting us with a narrative but he is leaving us with a pattern of how we need to come and how we need to follow and this is the backdrop if you will of, of him riding on a donkey if you will uh, those may those other individuals may have expected him to come a different way to be presented a different way keep in mind the Jews are waiting on salvation they are waiting to be delivered uh, from foreign domination they are waiting to be delivered uh, 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 from this type of uh, leadership uh, that has not only uh, uh, oppressed them but it has depressed their lives right and so this is the manner that Jesus comes 
uh, uh, into Jerusalem. And so we have to sort of look at what, uh, what the Father wants us to take away from this narrative. Uh, but but uh, Jesus gave the assurance that getting these animals would be no problem. So uh, every task is made easier. Watch this when Jesus' disciples follow his direction. Right, so the, this principle is still true for those followers who live and who walk uh, and who work by God's word. Uh, the pattern, if you will, when I was looking at this, uh, I couldn't help but think about Philippians chapter 2, and I hope that you will read that in, in its entirety, uh, talking about the humility again of Christ and how he came and how he was willing to come if you will and and submit and surrender his life uh, 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 as a ransom for our sinfulness it is not his sin but is it it is humanity's sinful nature that plagues all of us right every individual that is saved today uh, that is seeking to be saved will at some point have encountered being saved from the pattern or the course of life uh, their sinful lives and this is what gives us through faith in Jesus Christ and having the power of his resurrection uh, uh, as Paul would say to us in Philippians chapter 3 that we would now have power to live in this world uh, and follow the pattern of Jesus and not being entangled in this world by sin right and so that that is the purpose that is the kind of method uh, or manner if you will that we need to come to God as Jesus we need to surrender in in a in a, a posture of humility because we have a need uh, 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 of something and for something right and so if we understand uh, where we fall short and that we are struggling with with the nature of our of, of of our sins and we we can't solve it with just good deeds we can't solve it uh, all of it with 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 uh, uh, our good intentions we need the power of salvation working in our lives and so this is what Jesus is bringing uh, 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 to give to the people uh, uh, to the Jews if you will and subsequently to the entire world uh, that he paid the price for what ails us. He paid the price for what is giving us fits about uh, controlling uh, 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 our mannerisms, if you will. And, you know, one of the things about Matthew that, that, that you'll find, I believe, going back to uh, even chapter 12 and moving all the way through Matthew chapter 28, Christ, uh, and because he has been uh, uh, rejected, despised and rejected according to prophecy, uh, Matthew understood this rejection and devoted those chapters to not only Christ being rejected but his message being rejected. And so this is the this is the the issue today that 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 we have to confront. Uh, uh, it talks about here the principle is still true for those followers, right? Those of us who are willing to follow Jesus uh, in terms of how we live, how we walk, and how we work by God's word. So, so this is the pattern by which uh, we need to come. Uh, and this is the, the type of humility that we need to have before God, right? We can't, we can't minimize this, but uh, the question is asked, what task has the Lord commissioned the church to complete in his name? How are we doing and what can we do better? So again, taking the template of Philippians chapter uh, uh, 2 and talking about how Jesus came and uh, uh, he fulfilled everything that, that, that his father had required of him to do in a manner of humility because this is what he was commissioned to do. He stayed the course. Uh, he had to finish. John chapter 17 uh, uh, will we'll give an account, Jesus' own account to his father about his activity on earth that he had accomplished 
uh, 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 what the Father had given him to do. And so in like fashion, the church, the not just the local church, but the, 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 the global church, the universal church, right, has a, has a mandate, if you will, uh, uh, that, that Jesus has given to all of the followers of Jesus Christ. He has given to all of his disciples. We see this and we talk about this in the Great Commission. What has the Lord given us to do? We can look at this corporately and we can also look at this individually uh, because all of us have been uniquely placed in the body of Christ for a particular function and we will have to give an account for the activity uh, of the things that God has given us to do. So we need to look through the Word of God and look at ourselves as as, as uh, 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 the type of individuals that, that reflect upon what the Lord has given us to do and, and are we doing that, right? We have to be just like Matthew uh, uh, in understanding our role uh, 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 in the body of Christ and bringing it to a fulfillment, which is a familiar theme in the book of Matthew, or bringing it to, to completion. So we are on a particular journey. Uh, we have a particular amount of time. We have a particular amount of resources. The Lord has gifted us to function in a particular way. And so this is a very important question. What task, right, has the Lord commissioned the church? And we have to look at this across the entire spectrum of, of our existence as the people of God and start uh, uh, looking at through the word of God, uh, uh, our completion rate, right? Or our fruitful stages, if you will. Uh, there should be fruit uh, 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 bearing from the tree of the church. There should be fruit. There should be work going on producing fruit, right? In the church that it is functioning and that it is reproducing uh, uh, individuals, uh, 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 disciples as we are because we won't last we won't be able to remain but the church has to continue on the work of the kingdom of God has to continue and it takes people who are dedicated and committed as Jesus was devoted to fulfilling the things that his father gave him to do and never straying away from that path and so uh, uh, all of us at times, even churches at large, we get sort of uh, 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 off track of the things that God, the core values or mission uh, that the Lord has given us to do. There is uh, church work and there is the work of the church, right? And so we need to understand these principles and, 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 and be prayerful about the direction that the Lord uh, uh, has given us to uh, uh, to, to pursue uh, and, and bring these things to a close. But continuing on with that uh, uh, theme about fulfillment, uh, we have Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 17. And I want to read this, and this is very familiar to, to all of us. And this is Jesus talking here uh, during his Sermon on the Mount from uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5 through uh, chapter 7. Uh, but Jesus says here in verse 17, he said, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verse 18, For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So Matthew understood that and Matthew uh, 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 extracted that from the Old Testament uh, uh, as his theology. So it is very important for us to st understand that Christ was not destroying the law. He was not destroying the prophets or anything that they said, but he knew he was the fulfillment of the law. So it was very important that he stay the course and do the things that had been prophesied, that had been commissioned, and would be commissioned and charged to him when he came into this world. And, and the reason is, is very important for us to understand, as I read earlier, uh, talking about entering into the New Testament. 
people were waiting for salvation. People were waiting for the move of God. People were waiting who were in a place of desperate need, right? People were in a place where they needed deliverance. And so that's the challenge for the church and for us as uh, uh, the people of God that we uh, uh, that we carry on the business of God in a way of humility because the people need us, right? The people need us. We should never forget we serve because, number one, we want to give the glory to God, but it's not a selfish type of activity. We are serving because the people are in dire straits. And God has positioned us uh, not just to get a blessing, but to be a blessing. And this is what Jesus is coming to do. I hope we understand that. But moving on, the second outline is entitled The Testament. This is taken from Matthew uh, chapter 21, verses 4 through 7. Uh, uh, the Bible says, and I want to read this from the NIV translation. This took place, <clears throat> excuse me, to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Verse 5. Watch this, church. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples, verse 6 says, went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. And this was his transportation, if you will, into Jerusalem. And so, but, but this, even down to his transportation, Jesus moving into Jerusalem had been prophesied uh, through the prophet Zechariah. And I want to go over there and I want to read this because uh, this will help us to understand uh, the significance of, of Jesus' mission, right? His mission on earth, his mission among the people, this, this was an act of, of, of fulfilling uh, what the Lord had said uh, that he would do uh, in the life of his people. Uh, and so if you go with me to the book of Zechariah, and I want to look at chapter 9, and I want to read verse 9, uh, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, this is the fulfillment that Zechariah the prophet was sharing during his time on earth the bible says rejoice greatly O daughter of zion shout O daughter of jerusalem behold your king is coming to you watch this he is just and having salvation lowly and riding on a donkey a coat the foal of a donkey exactly the fulfillment that had been prophesied zachariah is telling israel uh, uh, that they needed to look forward to to what God would do. Uh, he says rejoice, right? In other words, you need to celebrate this. You need to praise God for what he is going to do. You need to praise God for what he said he would do. Uh, our praising God looks at two principles. It, 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 it looks retrospect in, in, in the things that God has done and its prospect. It looks forward to the things that God is going to do because as we read in Matthew chapter 5, not one jot or tittle of God's word will fail until all is fulfilled. For, so uh, Israel can now shout and they can rejoice because God has said this thing and it's going to come to pass. He says, your king is coming, right? Your salvation is coming. I know what you need and I'm sending it and it is coming, right? And, and he is going to have this salvation. And we need to understand that even though uh, the Jews were being dominated, right? Uh, uh, during the time of the opening of the, the New Testament, the problem of sin is an internal problem. They had external problems and they had internal issues, right? And so God is working from the inside out. God is bringing salvation to the hearts and minds. You might say, preacher, that doesn't make sense. It makes a lot of sense because the reason why we do things uh, and we harm one another 
it's not so much is because of the uh, the external things that we have in our hand that does the damage, but it's because of what's in our hearts that we even want to do harm to one another. So uh, this sinful nature needs to respect the will of God, surrender itself to the will of God. Uh, 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 and this is something that John the Baptist came to do. Uh, he talked about, as, as it had been prophesied concerning him, that he would be turning the hearts, right? Turning the hearts of men. That's very important. Our hearts have to be changed. It has to be converted. Uh, and if God converts it, if he uh, 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 saves us from the inside out, then we'll be better toward him and we'll be better toward our fellow man. This is the whole construct of the uh, uh, the Ten Commandments, right? How we treat one another and how we treat God. And so God knows exactly what our problems are. He knows exactly how to address it. And Jesus coming into the world, giving his life and dying for our sinful nature. Uh, it, it has to be dealt with, right? That's the whole framework of the, uh, uh, of the Old Testament. Even under the Mosaic system, uh, sin had to be addressed. How we treat one another has to be addressed. How we treat God has to be addressed. And God says the remedy is salvation. He has prophesied it uh, about this, about his son coming into the world. Zechariah has said uh, uh, this is what he's bringing and he's going to have salvation deliverance from the penalty and the power of sin rests in the hands and the power of Jesus Christ himself I hope that makes sense for us today so this account here shouldn't be strange to us now it shouldn't be uh, uh, confusing to us but he is fulfilling Jesus is a promise he is fulfilling the Word of God and now we know uh, why he has come we know what he is bringing into the world and he is going to accomplish this thing this is at the forefront of him going into Jerusalem uh, he has to come and he has to pay the price he has to die uh, uh, this horrible death that that we know all about in a public way that he crucifies sin we'll look at that in just a minute but the question is asked, how does or can God use you as a testament to the world about the amazing grace of God through Christ? So we have to be uh, 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 the type of people that understand the covenant that we are in, the dispensation that we're in, the fact that God has saved you uh, uh, and allowed people to look on you for the miracle that you are and you have to be able to testify to uh, uh, how you got saved. You need to be able to say to individuals that God delivered you from the penalty and the power of sin uh, and ultimately from the very presence of sin uh, uh, when we get to be with the Savior for all eternity. So we need to be able to tell this story and allow God to use us in a way to transform our old nature to a new nature a resurrected nature if you will uh, that that we now observe the covenant principles of God and that we are living and using our time on earth to be pleasing to God and to fulfill the things that God has given us to do that's our story right that's our testimony that's every man and woman's testimony every saved individual and if you're not saved and you're seeking to be saved you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind you must present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable uh, unto God I'm quoting uh, Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 so you can uh, demonstrate to the world right this transformation that you can demonstrate to your family members that there has been a great change right in you and be able to qualify that biblically and then through through our walk with the Lord that we have met the Savior right this is something that we should experience but I want to look before we uh, and as we get to move to this at last outline 
uh, 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 well, let me read uh, this last outline, and then we'll talk about Romans chapter 6 that I referenced early. This is taken from Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 through 11. The Bible says from the NIV translation, A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Verse 9, the crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed shouted Hosanna right save now to the son of David blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest heaven uh, verse 10 when Jesus entered Jerusalem the whole city was stirred and asked who is this verse 11 the crowds answered this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee Look at the posture, the position of these people uh, uh, who are under uh, 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 an, an evil ruler, if you will, who are going through uh, difficult times, who are living in a pivotal period in history here, and they are spreading their cloaks on the road. They are recognized. You remember that pattern of humility that I was talking about? They are sacrificing of themselves to the one who came to sacrifice himself. They are following him, not just in word, but in deed, right? And in action. So the crowds went ahead and then they're using their voice to acknowledge uh, the fact that they understand the Old Testament that Matthew is presenting. They understand understand the, 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 the promises that God had made to Israel to deliver them. And they are saying, Hosanna, save now. Save us right now, Lord. Can you imagine uh, the desperate voice of these individuals crying out to Jesus coming in uh, uh, to Jerusalem? Uh, um, perhaps some may not have understood. Maybe his disciples didn't quite understand the full scope of his coming and why all of this is taking place. But it will be realized. But, but, but we, we want to be able to understand here they are spreading their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, right? And so they are shouting, save me, Lord. Have you ever said that to the Lord? Save me, Lord, right? This is where we need to be. This is cut and dry uh, as it gets, right? They are screaming and shouting to be saved, to be delivered from what they are going through. And this is where we are today. We need to be shouting to the top of our voices with everything that is going on in this world. We need to be shouting out to the one who is able to save. And we need to be shouting out Hosanna, right, to the son of David. Blessed is he. He is a blessing, right, because he is bringing something into the world that we all need and that none of us can do for ourselves. Right. And so as Jesus comes in, everybody is stirred up. Everybody is looking. Everybody is asking about what does this mean and who is this guy? And the crowd says this is Jesus. Right. This is what we have to know today. This is the name that's above every name. This is what Philippians 2 will help us to understand. This is the name we need to realize that this is the only deliverance that we know this is the only one who is able right to save us he is the only one who is capable of delivering us and we need to have this kind of voice that screams out and that shouts out in desperation because this is where we are today we are living in desperate times and we need to be saved but I was looking at Romans chapter 6 church I'm almost through with you but I want to look at Romans chapter 6 I hope you will read this in all of its in, uh, 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 entirety but I want to focus on uh, Romans chapter 6 and I want to look at uh, verses 6 through 8 uh, Paul is talking here he says knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin watch this church might be done away with right the 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 the, the, the problem of sin that could not be solved in the Old Testament 
we can now realize it and appreciate that uh, uh, that what Jesus has accomplished here that sin can be done away with in a way Paul goes on to say that we should no longer be slaves of sin how is that possible how is that possible that we are no longer slaves to a sinful world that we actually live in the answer is because of the power of the Holy Ghost the resurrection power that we need to be acquainted with can now keep us and sustain us right in this sinful world and so in that way the nature of sin as it, re as it relates to the believer is done away with it's not ruling us it's not governing us as it was before when we had no power like the law like the mosaic law it had no power to save. Jesus brought the fulfillment of the law and the power that it takes if you you recall when he got up he said I got up with all power right that's very important in heaven and earth in my hand that's what we are living with and that's how sin can be done away with that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves of sin verse 7 still in Romans chapter 6 for he who has died right has been freed from sin that's you and me right if we follow the pattern the course that Jesus died dying a death to sin then we as uh, Paul is saying here that if you have died this death right if you have sacrificed yourself unto Jesus Christ and you have been given the power of the Holy Ghost you are now free from sin you don't have to live like that anymore verse 8 now if we died with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him this is looking forward now but look at verse 9 knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead he dies no more death no longer has dominion over him Watch this in verse 10. This is what I wanted to give you. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. So the pattern now that if we have died the same death that Jesus died, right? The same death to sin that we have surrendered our members as instruments, right? To God, then God gives us the power, right? God gives us the power through our faith to live in this sinful world, uh, 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 to be free of, uh, 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 of, of sin. It doesn't mean we won't make mistakes, but I'm talking about a pattern here. I'm talking about a way of life. There should be a difference now uh, uh, than before, right? So before Christ came, we, we, we could say that we couldn't help ourselves, but that shouldn't be an excuse for a born-again believer. You have help standing by. That's what the Holy Ghost is. He is our helper, right? He is our paraclete. He is our, sta he was on standby to help us in this sinful life. So we have the, the necessary equipment to live the kinds of life, uh, uh, lives that God would have us to live by nature of following this pattern and accepting what Jesus has done on the cross at Calvary, what he is coming in this text and in this lesson to do and to demonstrate that he is dying a, a death to sin, not for himself, but for you and I. So you and I can also, uh, 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 this nature can be crucified, right? In our very lives, this is by way of experience. So. Uh, uh, you know, we, we used to sing a song years ago. There had been a great change in me. The things that I used to do, I don't do anymore. The places that I used to go, I don't go anymore. Why? Because there had been a, a great change over me. So I hope this makes sense to us today, church. And uh, this is what we're talking about. This is the triumph, if you will, uh, that we have. Lastly, I want to give you uh, the first epistle of John, chapter 5. Uh, verses 4 and 5 and you'll get more uh, uh, information about this victory this triumph that we have over this sinful nature and this is why we praise the Lord why we, we, we praise the Lord because we have the victory over the past we have the victory 
over the condemnation that comes along with the past. We have the victory over the sinful nature because we thought we would have to live like that. But Christ has demonstrated and has shown us the way through his own life and through his own death and through his own resurrection. He has now given the disciples, his own followers, the power to live in this world uh, because we have a testimony. Right. And this is what God wants the world to see, that there is power available for everyone who believes and calls upon the name of the law. So we can be the kinds of witnesses if we are going to uh, uh, never experience the change uh, that Jesus brought to us at Calvary. Then what would we be witnesses to? Right. Uh, we have to witness what God has done and that has to be seen in the believer so i hope trust and pray that we've given you something to think about and i certainly want to pray for us now that as we continue uh to strive to to live the holy lives i want you to remember something you are not by yourself you are not alone ask the lord to uh, uh, give you another feeling if you will Ask the Lord to increase your understanding, to increase your knowledge. Ask him to gird you about with his word so you will have a defense, right, for yourself. Uh, uh, so we all have to live with temptations, the thing that the Lord have delivered us from. But it is possible for you to stand your ground and boldly proclaim the gracious liberties of our God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this season. We thank you for this account of this lesson, for bringing it back to us and helping us to understand what Jesus did, that, that, that he was the fulfillment of your desires and for your purposes for all humanity. He brought us exactly what we needed. Father, we thank you for the gift of salvation today. And we just pray that you will continue to save many, many more. We know there are many who are listening, who are going through various things, but we just speak peace today over their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we, we, we speak peace to the trial today. We speak peace to the circumstance. We, we, we speak peace to the confusion in the name of Jesus. Whatever the conflict might be, we speak God's peace over it in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for giving us rest on every side. Rest from sin. Rest from the old nature. Rest from the old way of thinking. Rest from our old habits. Rest from our old acquaintances. Just rest. God, we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we are praying for this world at large in the name of Jesus. Praying for the leadership. Praying for those who are sick and shut in. Praying for the bereaved families today. Hosanna to the son of David. Save us, Lord. Save us right now in the name of Jesus for whatever it is that ails us today. We thank you for what you have already done and we look forward to the coming, the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Just know that I love you and I'm continuing to pray that we would realize what has come and what is available to us today sin no longer has to be our master so until such time that the law will permit us to come together again we say god bless you